Okay, so this video is going to be a little introduction to random variables, which you see in probability and statistics. So we'll do a little work in this one, nothing too crazy, but again, hopefully we'll give you a little bit of an introduction and there'll be a follow-up video on this one as well. Before I do that, I'd like to give a shout out to my friends over at, well, at Geekly EDU on YouTube. So let me show you their page really fast. So here they are. Um, they've got videos on all kinds of stuff. They've got videos covering math, statistics, biology, physics, chemistry, economics, and other topics as well. So they certainly have some topics that I don't cover for sure. And a lot of these are, are more fun videos. A lot of them are, are certainly technical in nature. I always want you to come to me for my math videos, and uh, um, but if I can't help you, or there's certainly, again, topics they have that I don't, certainly please go feel free to check them out if I'm not able to help you. I've watched a couple. I thought they were fun. I thought they were engaging. I thought they were entertaining. And yeah, just, just take a look. And as always, it's always good for us uh, as creators if you comment on our videos, if you like them, Basically, if you just interact with them. And so please feel free to post comments on there. Tell them Patrick JMT sent you and you like what they're doing. And yeah, just go take a look at what they're doing. They've got good stuff. So I just wanted to, to give a shout out to them. And I want you to, to go check them out. So, okay, so back to random variables. So I remember I had a textbook. I don't remember many years ago because I'm starting to be an old man and I have no idea where it is, but they said a random variable is neither random nor a variable. But uh, okay, that's what they're called and that's the terminology. So, but what, what is a random variable? So a, a random variable is a quantity whose value depends on the outcome of a probability experiment. So all we're looking at is just the probability of certain events. What's the probability of an event What's the probability that an event will occur? That's all we're looking at. And we're trying to, trying to understand those probabilities. So random variables are represented using letters. Quite often, they're represented by the capital letter X. And that's what we'll be doing in this video. So suppose that capital X represents the number of sixes obtained when rolling a die three times. So if you have two, we call them dice. If we have one, we call it a die. So you're rolling a, a six-sided die three times, and we use the notation, the probability that capital X equals little x, that's gonna denote the probability that the number of sixes is little x. So for example, we could have the probability that X, capital X equals zero, that's the probability we get zero sixes. The probability that capital X equals one, okay, that's one six. We could get two sixes, or we could get three sixes. That's what we could get in this case, right? So I've got videos on tree diagrams. I'm not gonna make you watch me fill this thing in. If you need to see tree diagrams, um, again, I have many examples on those. Feel free to, to search for some, or I can point you in the right direction if you can't find them. But again, all this represents, so I, I've, I've written this tree out, and you are gonna have to, unfortunately, watch me fill it in. So this is gonna be my starting roll. So for example, if I follow this branch, it says I get a six. And again, what can, I, what can happen if I roll a die? I can get a one, two, three, four, five, or six. So there's six outcomes total. Of those, only one of those is a six. So there's a one-sixth probability that I will get a six. And likewise, you know, suppose I followed that branch and then this branch. Well, the probability of not getting a six, well, there's five numbers out of six that are not gonna be a six. So the probability of not getting a six would be five sixths and so on and so forth. Now, another thing to remember is that these are independent events. So remember there's independent and dependent events in probability. And an independent event means Whatever happens in, in, during one event, it has no bearing on what's going to happen the next time. So whatever number you roll the first time, it's not going to impact the number you roll the second time. It has no bearing on that. You can still get any possible number. 
So these are going to be independent events. And when we have independent events, we can just multiply those respective probabilities together. And that's what we're going to do. So if we follow this top branch, that's the probability of getting one six, one six, another six. So that's the probability of getting three sixes. So it says that's going to be one sixth times one sixth times one sixth. And that's going to be 1 over 216. So if I follow this branch again, okay, I can get a 6, a 6, and then not a 6. So that's going to be the probability, according to this branch, of getting two 6s. And if I multiply those together, that's 1 6 times 1 6 times 5 over 6. So that's going to be 5 over 216. I don't know if I should write all these out. I guess I will. Again, sorry to bore you. So, okay, so my next one, let's see, we could get a 6, not a 6, but then a 6. So what are we getting? We're getting two 6s. So I'm being a little sloppy here with my notation, too. I want to point that out. I'm not saying the probability of getting two 6s overall for example, with this line is 5 out of 216. I'm just computing this branch. I'm just computing this branch is all I'm doing. To eventually compute the probability of getting two sixes, I'm going to add all the uh, two sixes up together. So just, just be careful about that. So, okay, so my next branch, we get a six, not a six, not a six. So that would give us a total of, well, one six. So if you multiply 1 sixth times 5 sixths times 5 sixths, um, that's going to give us, so 1 6 I'm going to write them out. Why not? Grab some popcorn, my friends, and enjoy the show. So that's 25 over 216. And then we could get a not a 6, but then we could get a 6, and then we could get a 6. So that gives us what? Two sixes? One, two. So that's going to be 5 over 6 times 1 over 6 times 1 over 6. So that's 5 over 216. And then, okay, let's see. Let's do this branch next. So that gives us what? 1 6 total, it looks like. So that's 5 over 6 times 1 over 6 times 5 over 6. So that's 25 over 216. Just two more to go. So let's see. It looks like we got not 6, not 6, but we do have a 6. So it's going to be 1 6. So that's 5 over 6 times 5 over 6 times 1 over 6. So 25 over 216. Whew. Last but not least, notice at the bottom, this is the only way to get 0 6s. All right, and that's going to be 5 over 6 times 5 over 6 times 5 over 6. And that's going to be 125 over 216. Okay, so this is going to now denote our, a lot of times you see these little tables. This is going to be our probability distribution for the random variable. capital X. So we said the probability, there's only one way to get zero sixes, and that's at the bottom. So again, we've got three different outcomes. You can get zero, one, two, or three sixes if you roll it three times. So the probability you get zero sixes is 125 after out of 216. There's only one way to get three sixes, and again, that's as if you get all three. So we said that's one out of 216, 1 over 216. Well, the probability, for example, of getting two sixes, let's see, we could get two sixes that way, we could get two sixes that way, and we could get two sixes that way. So let's see, does that look good? I think that looks good. I don't see, am I missing any? I don't think I'm missing any. So the probability of getting two sixes, that's going to be 5 out of 216, that's one way we could do it, plus another 5 out of 216, plus another 5 out of 216, 
that's 15 out of 216. Well, if you reduce that, that will give you, did I add these up right again? I keep feeling like I, I, I'm making a mistake here. One, two, three. Okay, which am I, I'm doing two sixes. That's why I'm, I'm looking at my numbers off to the side and I'm like, this isn't right. Yeah, this is right. So if you reduce that, that's five over 72 if you simplify. You wouldn't know it, but I keep remaking this video because I keep staring off and looking at the wrong numbers. So the probability of one six, that's what I should have done maybe. Those are the two ways I can do it. And then this way. So if I do 25 over 216, so now I'm going to add up those ways. So 25 over 216 plus 25 over 216 plus 25 over 216. That's going to be 75 over 216. And if you reduce that, that reduces to 72, excuse me, 25 over 72. That is now going to be our probability distribution. Now, something that's interesting, and, and this is probably intuitive, maybe it's intuitive, I don't know, maybe it's not. Maybe it's something you haven't considered. It's something to consider. It's definitely something to remember. If you add up these numbers, 125 over 216, okay, you got to get common denominators, and you can check my arithmetic. But if you add up these numbers and get common denominators, this is going to add up to 1, and that makes sense. It's sort of like you're exhausting the probability that, that, that something can happen, right? The probability of flipping a coin and getting heads is 50% or 0.5. The probability of getting a tails is 50% or 0.5. And if you add 0.5 and 0.5, what do you get? You get 1. So, again, if you add up all of these probabilities together, they always have to equal 1. And, again... Hopefully that's, maybe that's intuitive and maybe it's not. Let me just leave this here. There's no reason to erase it. So that's what these two things say next. It says the probability of an event occurring is between 0 and 1. If it's 0, right, it absolutely won't occur. If it's 1, it means it's absolutely going to happen. And otherwise, the probability is something between 0 and 1. Maybe it's 10%, 20%. So maybe it's 0.1, maybe it's 0.2. Uh, that's what this rule says here. So again, the probability of an event is between 0 and 1. And this last part just says, if you add the sum of the probabilities together, it says it has to equal 1, and that's what we just talked about. Okay, so those are useful things to remember. So let's look at two more quick examples. So here we're going to tabulate the probability distribution for... So let's look at the sum, whoops, let's look at the sum of the faces when two ordinary dice are thrown. And then let's look at the probability distribution for the smaller number when two ordinary dice are thrown. So again, I've got most of my table filled in because I don't want you to have to sit here and watch me do this. But I'm going to fill in a couple just to just to show you what's going on. So suppose these are the numbers we can get when we roll the first time. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are the numbers we can get the second time we roll, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this entry, for example, says, well, I've got a 1 the first time, and I've got a 1 the second time. So I'm going to list that as, well, just 1, 1. This entry says I've got a 3 the first time, and then a 2. So I roll a 3 and then a 2. And this entry says I get a 1, and then I get a 4. So I've got a 1 and a 4. So you can, you can check. And there's going to be 36 entries here again, which makes sense because there's six rolls. There's six outcomes for the first roll. There's six outcomes for the second roll. So there's 36 possible combinations. Um... All right, let me, let me say combinations even has a terminology in, in uh, probability. So let me say 36 possible outcomes. Maybe that's even a better, a better wording. Okay, so what can you get? So let, in part A, we're looking at the sum of the faces. Well, the smallest sum you could get would be 1 plus 1, which would be 2. Notice the largest sum you would get would be 6 plus 6, which would be 12. 
And then we could get everything in between. We could get 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 11. And now it's just it's just a matter of counting. So the sum of the faces when two ordinary die are thrown. Well, the only way to get a 2 is if we get a 1 and a 1. So there's only one way out of a to total of 36 possible outcomes to get a sum of a 2. Well, how many ways could we get a sum of a 3? Well, we could get a 2 and a 1, and then we could get a 1 and a 2. That's the only way it can happen. So there's two ways out of 36. And again, you could reduce these for sure, but I'm not going to. So let's see, we could get a 4. And notice you're really just looking at the diagonals. You could get a 4, a 4, and a 4. So that's three ways out of 36. The number of ways you could get a 5 would be here. That's all the ways you can get a 5. So that is 4 out of 36. And the same way, to get a 6, that looks like a total of 5 ways out of 36. The number of ways you can get a 7, that'll be those ways. So what is that, 6? out of 36. And notice now we're sort of, uh, that was sort of a long diagonal. Now we're going back down. So it's going to be 5 out of 36, 4 out of 36, 3 out of 36, 2 out of 36. And the only way to get a 12 is to do 6 plus 6. So there's only one way out of 36. Again, if you sum these up, this is going to equal 1. You can double check that. So the smaller number when two ordinary dice are thrown. So now we're going to look at the probability distribution of getting um, the, uh, the smaller number. So the smaller number can either be a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. Well, okay, how many ways can the smaller number be a 1? Well, I could get a 1 and a 1. I could get a 1 and a 2, a 1 and a 3, a 1 and a 4, a 1 and a 5. Or two and a one, a three and a one, a four and a one, a five and a one, or a six and a one. And any of those outcomes, one's gonna be the smallest number that crops up. So let's count. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So let me clear this out. So there's eleven out of thirty-six possible ways that we can roll these die and have one be the smaller of the two numbers. The same way for two. So where's two the smaller of the two numbers? And again, okay, they can be a tie. So two and three, two and two, two and four, two and five, two and six, three and two, four and two, five and two, six and two. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So... 9 out of 36 there, and then you can keep counting. So the 3s, it's just going to be, if you count those up, and I had that to be 7 out of 36. 4 is the smallest, if you count those up, and that is going to be 5 out of 36. 5 is going to be the smallest this way, and let's see, did I count those correctly? I feel like I missed one there. Oh, I didn't, that's wrong there, I need to be careful. So 5 is going to be the smallest. Um, I jotted that down wrong. Maybe I was being sloppy there. Did I look at those correctly? I did do that incorrectly. I was totally looking at those incorrectly. So let me go back for a second. So 1's the smallest here and here. That looks good. 2 is the smallest here and here. That works. So 3 is the smallest here and here. That works. 4 is the smallest here and here. That works. Okay, I think I was okay. I'm losing my mind. 5 is the smallest, yeah, okay, here and here. So that is um, 3 out of 36. And the only way 6 is the smallest is if you get a 6 and a 6. So that's 1 out of 36. So that would be the probability distribution for that random variable. Again, nothing random about these. It's just uh, it's just the probability of an event occurring. That's all you're looking at. So I should point out, too, there's, there's different types of random variables. There's discrete and continuous. So here, this is a very an example of a, a, a discrete random variable. So the outcomes are sort of, I don't know how to describe them, sort of chunky. You know, if you were looking at, for example, the, 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 the probability, maybe you're on the phone 
on customer service and you want to know the probability you wait between zero and one minute, that would be an example of a continuous random variable because you could wait any, any fraction of a second between zero minutes and, and one minute, for example. Okay, so let's do this next example. Expectation and expected value, I will talk about in another video, so we'll get to that. So, okay, so in this example, we've got a random variable who has the probability distribution as follows. It can take on values one, two, three, or four. And the probability of getting one is one third. The probability of getting two is one third. The probability of getting three is the value C. And the probability of four is C. We want to know what's the value of C. Well, all we need to do for this one is we just need to again recognize that if we add these together, we know that these have to add up to one. So one third plus one third is two thirds. C plus C is going to be two C. If we subtract two thirds from each side, well, one minus two thirds is going to be one third. And then if we divide both sides by two, or equivalently, multiply by a half, we'll get that C equals 1 over 6. So now we know that C equals 1 over 6. So we could fill that in here and here. So for part B, if we want to find the probability that x, our random variables, variable, is between 1 and 4. Well, we're figuring out the probability that either x equals 2 or x equals 3. But now we know that. We know the probability that x equals 2 is 1 half. The probability that x equals 3, we just figured out what c was. That is, what do we say, 1 sixth. So we can get common denominators. So let's see, let's multiply 1 half. Uh, top and bottom by 3. So that's going to be 3 over 6 plus 1 over 6, which is going to be 4 over 6, which is going to be 2 thirds. So the probability that your random variable x takes on a value between greater than 1 and less than 4, or equivalently, it takes on a value that's either 2 or 3, that's going to equal 2 thirds. So Okay, a little intro to random variables. We'll talk about expectation and expected value in the next video. And um, yeah, I hope this helps. So again, go check out my friends over at Geekly Edu, and uh, just give them a shout out and stick around. I'm gonna do some more probability and statistics videos if you need those. So I hope this has been helpful. As always, feel free to post comments and questions. They're always welcome if I can't help you. There's always some nice person out there in the YouTube community who's often willing to point you in the right direction.